Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achano and welcome to episode 11 of Network Chat Programming. Okay, so I'm going to be making a few changes here. It's kind of taken a while, all right? I'm going to be honest. This was supposed to be a small series and we're actually focusing more on GUI than on networking. And that was the whole idea to focus on networking. So I'm going to cut down on GUI a bit, okay? We have this issue right now that if we drag, um, you can see this massive uh, white space here that's actually gray. Um, I'm not going to bother fixing that completely. I'm going to slightly fix it, okay? The way that I'm going to slightly fix it is I'm, sim I'm simply just going to get rid of it. So what we have is you can see here on our scroll, which is our text area, which is our massive history, uh, little uh, text area, uh, we start a grid uh, coordinate one. Well, I'm going to shift that back to zero on the X and the Y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the grid width three. So I'm upping it by a bit. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm moving it left and extending it a bit. And I'm also going to... Uh, change the uh, grid height here to two, okay? So I'm adding one, because this is one by default, that's why I had to add it. I'm adding one to each of these two, and I'm subtracting one from each of these. Pretty simple. So if I launch it now, what you should see is something that's not really too different, okay? But, and you can see it looks, well, the same. But if I try and resize it now, you can see it's actually gonna resize with it. Now we do have some other problems, okay? Namely, the only problem that we actually have to worry about is the fact that if we drag up, the text field, as you can see, disappears. And I'm not gonna cover that today. We're gonna to cover that another time in more of an aesthetical thing. Now, also, you can see that we have this uh, text box, this text field problem here. If I uh, just move this up so you guys can see properly. We have this text box uh, problem here. And that, of course, is because um, we haven't shifted that across either, like we did with our text area. So if we go down to our text message, which is right over here, um, and where are we? Yep, right over here. I'll actually just uh, copy this here and set the uh, the width to be two, and shift the grid x. Uh, what, what is it called? Sorry, grid width to be two, and I'll shift grid x to minus what to you know I'll subtract it by one making it zero here. And if we launch this now, what we should see is uh, if I resize this, you can see it kind of stays with it, okay? And that doesn't change. And that's good, okay? That's a good start here. Um, that's all that we're going to do with GUI right now because, again, as I said, this is turning into more of a how to make GUIs with Java, which is not the absolute purpose of the series at all. Um, okay, so let's start on networking, finally, right? I'm not going to cut you off and be like, see you guys next time. No, we're going to start on networking right now because this needs to be done. Now, there's going to be a method here. And now, I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not happy with the way the client's laid out right now. This is more of a GUI class, but whatever. I'll still keep it this way. What I will do is I'll actually just make a method here, a private method, called, uh, it'll be void. Uh, in fact, it can be boolean because then we're going to turn false. Uh, I'm just thinking if we should. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it boolean here. So, open connection. All right. Now it's going to need some parameters. It's going to need an address, which is a string. It's going to need a, uh, well, it's definitely going to need an address. It's definitely going to need a port and ID and name. Not really. Yeah. Okay. So if we go up over here, um, we will actually run this open connection, uh, method here with the parameter address and the, uh, integer port. Now, when we do open this connection, um, this is a boolean. So the whole purpose of making this a boolean is that we can then handle if it works or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a boolean uh, connect essentially to be open connection. So what, what is that going to do, right? For, for those of you who are confused by this, what this is doing is it's running this method here, grabbing the return value and assigning it to, to connect. Okay, so it's still running the method as if, as if it was usual, as if it was just a normal void method. If we get rid of that. It's just going to run the method, but as you can see, it's not return. It's not returning. Sorry, it's not assigning that return value to anything. There, it's just disappearing. But here, we're actually assigning it to a variable. So then, what that enables us to do is say that okay, if we return false, you know, ideally, um, we'll implement here an open connection that if false is returned, you know, if if it if it fails in opening a connection, will return false. So what we can do here is say something like if you know if connect didn't work out. Right, so if connect is false, then we can kind of return and don't bother creating a window or whatever. Or in fact, better yet, actually create a window. But you know, say something like, uh, you know, we'll we'll just print out an error for now that says, um, you know, connection failed. Connection failed, and we'll also append that system there. 
And we'll also append that to the console by typing console uh, and then whoops console and then our text over here. Now this this uh, this method is more of like a C way of handling things to be honest like this uh, this boolean stuff because Java does has uh, Java does has Java does have uh, you know exception handling built in like try and catch and stuff but um, occasionally you know something like this might be uh, useful and might look really nice as it does in this case okay so again up to you if you use it or not but it is a good suggestion so how do we open the connection, right? How do we actually get Java to connect to a computer that is not this computer? How do we get it to actually branch out and access the network and the networking hardware? Now, we're going to need a few classes for this, right? The primary class that we're going to use for the client will be a socket, okay? Now, that's obvious, right? A socket, a so what, what is a socket? Think of a socket as literally like a power outlet, right? In, in order to access power, you have to connect to that socket. In, in Java or in programming, in order to, well, in networking actually, in order to connect to the network, we need to actually connect to the socket. And I use the term networking in very broad form. I realize that if you're doing um, actual like IT networking, you probably wouldn't even use the word socket very often. You probably use, uh, well, you use other words. But um, the point is uh, a socket is essentially your entrance into the network. So we need to create a socket. Now, this is where we decide if we want to use what, what protocol we want to use, okay? There are two main protocols that we can use for actually transferring data or sending packets in between two clients on a network, um, two devices on a network. So uh, the first one is TCP. Now, that's the transmission control protocol, I'm pretty sure. Um, the benefits of that, I, I'm, I'm going to make an in-depth episode on this. I'm pretty sure I'm actually going to do that because uh, it, it's a really in-depth topic, but basically TCP actually guarantees delivery of packets, okay? Because what happens is um, once, and a packet, by the way, is just a bunch of data, just a bunch of bytes that we can then, uh, you know, data, we're just sending data, it's called a packet. Um, so, uh, TCP, um, if we actually send a packet of data, you know, using the TCP protocol, what happens is when the receiving end actually receives that packet, it actually sends a reply being like, I've got it, I've received it. And that way, you're guaranteed that your delivery will be um, actually, you know, it, that it, it will actually get delivered, it won't get lost on the way. And the other thing that it guarantees is actual um, sequential delivery. Well, not really sequential delivery, but once it receives a bunch of packets, it actually orders them into the actual order that they were supposed to be get sent in. Um, so as you can imagine, TCP is good for, you know, areas where data is very important. Now, because... Oh, actually, I should probably go for the other protocol first. UDP, that's a user datagram protocol, I think. Is it user? Yeah, I think it's user datagram protocol. Um, chase me up on that, though. Uh, basically, that is the opposite of TCP in a way, okay? It doesn't care if packets get there or not. And the other thing it doesn't care, this is, this is the other thing I should mention. TCP has to establish a connection before it sends packets. It can't just send packets to an address. It has to establish a connection with that address first, or that device first. UDP does not. You can just send a packet to... 192.168.1.100, which you might not have a, uh, a device connected to that um, to that IP address, and you, you know, you with, with using UDP, like it, the the protocol wouldn't care if if it actually gets there or not. It'll just send it. TCP, you can't just send it to that IP address. You have to actually establish a connection first. There's something called a three-way handshake. I'm not going to get into that stuff. That's pretty advanced networking stuff. All you need to know is that TCP requires a connection at all times and will acknowledge whether packets are received or not. UDP doesn't care. You can imagine straight away now that UDP is useful for things like games because sometimes, you know, you temporarily lose connection to the server and that's not a big deal, okay? The other problem is TCP will resend packets that do not get there, okay? If your network times out for a few for two seconds, TCP will actually resend those packets that were not received by you as a result of that network timeout. Because of that, you'll be two seconds behind in the game, okay? That's a bit of an issue. That's why UDP, you know, you time out for two seconds, you don't receive data at all, and then you start receiving the most up-to-date data when you get your connection back online. That's why UDP is good for games. Okay, that was a very quick up, uh, very very quick explanation. I hope you guys got that. Um, but the idea here is that we're going to be using UDP for this. Now, for this uh, chat program. Is that the best idea? Probably not. Um... <laughs> Probably not, because what happens is, if we do lose the connection, we'll actually never get that message that was sent. Um, but because this is a lead up to game programming, 
we are going to use UDP, okay? I might do a TCP version of this later, probably not, but we'll see. So what we need are two classes, okay? One class, really, that will actually handle the connection, and that is a datagram socket. Now, user datagram pr protocol is what UDP stands for, so that's why we use a datagram. If we were using a uh, TCP, we just use socket, okay? This is a class in Java called socket, and that handles TCP uh, connections. Not server socket. Server socket is the, uh, the server side. So, private datagram socket, socket. You can call it whatever you like, I'm going to call it socket because it's it's our socket, it's our connection. Um, the other class we're going to actually need, let's import that class quickly by hitting Command Shift O because I'm on Mac or Control Shift O on Windows. Private uh, inet address, address. So what is an inet, an inet address, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Okay, uh, let's call it um, inet address. Oh. Let's just call it, uh, it'll essentially be our, our IP address, I'm just going to call it IP here. Now, what is it, What is this inet address thing? Um, let's see if Java can give a better explanation than I can. Well, look at that. Exactly. <laughs> I, I thought it might be this simple. It's a, it's a, it's an IP address. Okay. I, I, I thought, I, I, for some reason I figured the Java would give some real elaborate explanation, but no, it just says it's an IP address, which of course it is. Okay. It is an, it is an IP address. Now, what do we use the internet address for this IP address for? We actually use it for destining our location of packets. So in other words, if we want to send a packet to a particular address, we use this inet address thing. And the reason we use this and not just a string is because socket accepts this and not a string. Okay, so back into here, we've got this, we've got, we've got our, IP ad our IP address as a string here, right? We need to convert it to an inet address, to, a, to this IP address um, object, essentially. So how do we do that? Well, luckily it's very, very simple, okay? All we need to do is actually set IP here, which is referring to this, to, this is a static method here, init address dot get by name, and then our address, which is our string, or our string, uh, which is right there, okay, cool. Now we need to try and cache this, we'll probably throw a uh, unknown host exception, yep. Um, which is in case we enter something like Cherno as the uh, as the IP address, that's clearly not an, not an IP address, so. We do have to handle for stuff like that. Now, uh, what else? So, oh, the port, of course. We also need the port, and um, I'll tell you why. Actually, we don't really need the port for the client, do we? We'll talk about that a bit more a bit, a bit later because it is quite a topic. So, we also set the socket equal to new datagram socket. Okay, sweet. Um, of course, that's a lowercase g. Right, we also need to add this to uh, our catch clause, this socket exception. Now, if we do get any of these exceptions, something's gone wrong and essentially, well, it's a problem. So what we want to do here is, we can print the stack trace, that's fine, but we want to return false, okay? And we want to do the same thing here. Now, here's a quick trick that uh, might help you guys out a bit. Um, and that is, no, I should probably not mention that here. I was gonna mention error handling, but that's uh, that's quite off topic. We'll, we'll deal with that later though. Um, so yeah, and then if everything goes right, we'll just return true at the end of this, okay? Now, that's pretty much it, right? That is, uh, that's pretty much it. Now, why do we need stuff like uh, the address, for example? Like, we haven't used it right now. Why do we uh, even need that? And the reason we need that is because when we do actually send data, we'll need this address. And and just basically a good, a good I guess, place to convert it into an inet ines it's probably an INET address, that's probably how you pronounce it. But the good way to actually convert this string into an official IP address is probably in the opening connection thing. And then eventually when we make, when we write our send method, which is over here, but if, when we actually send it over the network, we will um, we'll actually uh, use this INET address, I'm gonna start calling it an INET address, um, to actually send it correctly. And we also use the port of that, of that case. So we don't need this, uh, in fact, we probably don't need any of this. This could be done somewhere else. Uh, did not think this one through, did I? Um, doesn't matter. I might add more stuff into here later. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. That is how we open a connection. I know we haven't done anything major yet, but uh, next video, episode 12, we're going to cover sending data over a network, and uh, the one after that probably receiving, and then we'll, we'll, we'll move on to server stuff. And that's really it. Like, this is a pretty simple application here. It's really not that difficult. But if you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button. Let's go to 200 likes for one video per day, 300 likes for two videos per day. Let's get the series over and done with. So make sure you do hit the like button if you did enjoy the video. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.